Thank you. So now with JuliaCon being 10 years, I thought it would be a little bit fun to look at the Julia repository and look a little bit on the different things that have been achieved there very, very shortly. So first, a little bit of so some stats. The very first commit to the Julia repository was made in August 22, 2009 by Stefan with the classical initial empty commit commit message. So that was 13 years and 11 months ago. I had to use a little website to calculate that, so I hope it's correct. But maybe interesting, the second commit is by Jeff and it's the beginning work on the parser. Uh, the total number of commits right now is 55,000. And if you sort of divide that with the number of days the repository has been in, in existence, it turns out to be around 11 commits per day. Uh, the total number of issues that have been opened in total are 23,300 approximately. And right now we have almost 4,000 open, but almost 20,000 closed. So that turns out to be around 16% of the total issues open. Looking at the pull request then, we currently have 939 open. Uh, a total tw around 27,000 with 939 open and many closed, 20, 26,000 closed. So there are around 3.5% of all pull requests ever opened are currently open. The total users who have opened issues seem to be around 4,000 with the total number of users who have opened pull requests is a bit smaller, which is natural to see because you know opening a pull request it's a little bit more work, so it's a little bit under 2,000 there. If we look at the commit activity, we already discussed this a little bit in the keynote today, but you can see that after Julia 1.0, the commit um, frequency went down a little bit, and I think explanations for that is that people actually started using Julia for things. The language is good enough that you can use it for things and we also moved out some of the standard libraries to external repositories. So for example, the PKG uh, standard libraries in a separate repository. So all the work there is not reflected in the commit activity graph here. You can look at the star history of the repository. So we can see sort of an inflection point here, which is naturally when 1.0 was released. And of course that's gonna give a bit of a bump. But what I think is interesting, if you look at sort of the the rate of stars before 1.0 and after, you can see it's a dramatic increase in the rate of stars and it keeps the trend keeps continuing. So I know there was a little bit of critique we released 1.0, but looking at this, I think it was really uh, the right thing to have done back then. Uh, we can also look at the, how the number of PRs have evolved over time. So the green line here is the total number of PRs that have been opened. And the pink line here is the ones that have been closed. And then down here we have the ones that are currently open. So this is then a time graph here from the start of the repository to today. And then here we have when Julia 1.0 was tagged. And we can see that the number of pull requests kind of started increasing exponentially here. But then after 1.0, it seems to be more of a linear trend. And uh, the graph here for the total open pull requests, it's a bit hard to see. So on the right hand side, we have sort of the, the total number of open pull requests here in the blue line. And that uses the left y axis then. So around now we can see it's around 900. But then the purple line, we can see the ratio of open to closed pull requests. So we can see that uh, we're kind of uh, we're around here now, which is around 3.5% of all pull requests are currently open. And a bit interesting, I thought, is to zoom in on these points where we have very big reductions here. And I think that can be explained by someone just deciding that, okay, now I'm going to go through a lot of pull requests and do a lot of work. And so a lot of work can happen at short times. Uh, doing the same for the total number of issues then. Uh, it's not that much to say, but we can see that the, the ratio here for total number of issues seems to converge right now to about 16% uh, um, of uh, open issues to the total number of issues that have been opened. And then uh, I wanna give some Julia repository rewards here for different uh, interesting situations. So we have the pull request with the longest title which is by Dillum, and I want to read this out in its full. So it's interactive utils version info. When verbose is equal to true, print environment variables that might affect the network options to std lib. Also, try to redact some, but not all, sensitive environment variables. 
Then we have the fastest pull request merge, which was made by uh, Jacob Polevsky. It was called Fix Some Syntax Deprecation Warnings in the Perf folder. It was open there 2014, 1007, 21, 16, 24, and it was merged the same day, 21, 16, 28. <laughs> and I was not around at that time, but I was, I was really impressed how fast CI was back then. <laughs> And then we have the slowest PR merge by <laughs> Simon Byrne. And that was the remove type parameter from abstract triangular. It was opened in 2018, and it's actually merged just a few weeks ago in 2023. So that was open for almost 2,000 days. So when you're complaining that your PRs don't get merged quickly, you can talk to Simon, because maybe he has some things to, he can share his experience. And then we have the most discussed issue, which was by Yi Hao, and that's the classic taking vector transposes seriously. And that one has 417 comments. And then finally, we have the issue with the most labels I took out. So that's an issue here. It's the wrong sprint output with the flag. Uh, that issue is still open. It has the backport flags, like, okay, this should be backported. It's a bug in a regression. Uh, it has to do with display and printing. And I like this label here, forget me not. I think we can replace this one by saying I am forgotten because it seems to fulfill kind of the same purpose. So yeah, that was a very short uh, look at the Yulia repository, thanks. Thank you for the interesting talk. Yeah, we yeah have a question there. So, uh, you gave the extremes. Yeah. Oh, that would be interesting to see like the half time of a, a pull request. I don't have that available here, but yeah, that would be an interesting thing to plot, yeah. And, and presumably there's a, like, like a long tail of pull requests that will just never be addressed or something. Yeah, I mean, there's always these pull requests which are like, maybe we'll, it's gonna happen at some point, so you don't really wanna close them, but it's kinda unlikely maybe, so there'll probably be a long tail of these things that keep going. <laughs> well, uh, the slowest PR merge might be a bit hard because you have to wait for a long time for that one. Uh, if you're really fast on the button, you can probably beat this four second one, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the easy one to do, yeah. But, you know, next year there might be a different award, so you don't know what's gonna... Simon? Actually, what I want to know is, who, what's the longest open issue that's closed with that? Yeah, oh, that's a good, I think the hard thing with this is that sometimes issues are open very long time and then they're just closed uh, because someone says this is not relevant anymore. So you want to have like, it's closed because it got fixed somehow, but yeah. 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 <laughs> So, yeah, I was actually thinking about mentioning that, that this big, <laughs> yeah, so we're having this beginning work on the parser is slowly being undone and replaced. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, I tried to make things readable at least somewhat. <laughs> oh, yeah. So this is, this is more of like a, a less happy question. Like the <laughs> random commits and stuff and lines of code is just like whoosh, keeps getting data. It like, is that sustainable? Is there any plan to, to not just like get a bigger and bigger repository of authority? Yeah, I think one thing we did with the 1.0 release was the standard library thing. So we had like, felt like we had so much stuff in the repository and then things were moved out into standard libraries. So that was sort of step one. And then as was mentioned in this keynote today, the idea is to have these standard libraries be kind of upgradable. And at some point, uh, some point maybe they'll move out. So 
the point there is to sort of have the core Julia compiler be one thing and then have the standard libraries be a little more, more free so they're not like in the repository itself. Yeah, thank you.